In this video, we're going to explain the weird world of multi-scale guitars, or fan frets. Why do they look like a goddamn suspension bridge? What's their real purpose? Are they harder to play? We're going to dig into all of that here on The Axe. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Nick. I'm a guitarist here on YouTube. So multi-scale guitars, or fan frets as some of you call them. Yes, I know if you use traditional guitars, they do look a little weird, but I promise you they serve a purpose and they're not as odd as you think. In fact, if you watch this video, they make perfect sense. To be honest, you probably already know about a few multi-scale instruments, you just don't realize it. So the multi-scale guitars are growing in popularity, especially in our like metal community. You see this design on like traditional guitars with headstocks and the headless models for sure. I do a whole breakdown on headless guitars, the link will be in the description and I'll put a card up at the top. But what do we even mean by multi-scale? This concept is pretty easy to understand. Instead of having all the strings on one scale, all the same length, take this Ibanez right here here. All strings are on the same length, no fan fretting, nothing like that. All these strings here are on a 25.5 scale, meaning that from the bridge to the nut, we got about 25.5 inches, give or take a few milliliters. Now where this differs on multi-scale guitars is that each string, each one of those strings, has a different scale, different scale length. The longest scales found on the thicker strings and the shortest scales found on the lower gauges. So what this means is if you have a six string guitar, you effectively have six different scales on that guitar. Same goes with the seven and eight strings. If you have seven strings, you have seven scales. If you have eight strings, you have eight different scales. And because of this, the frets need to accommodate for all those scales. And then this is where the fan frets come into play. To fret all of these different scales equally, all you have to do is tilt the frets in one direction or the other. It's because each one of the scales, i.e. strings, need to have the right proportion of fret distance compared to all the other ones. The longer the scale, the bigger the fret spacing it needs to be. And then to keep that all on the same guitar neck, they just fan them out consistently. Capiche? Now multi-scale designs aren't new technology at all. I promise you, you already know at least two different multi-scale instruments out there already. The grand piano and the harp use this same design and they've been using it for centuries. That's why when you open up a grand piano, you see that there's strings that are super long and strings that are super short. And then you also see that shape on a harp as well. See, you knew more than you thought. So now let's talk about what the multi-scale design does for tension, tone, and performance. If you've ever down-tuned a guitar, especially playing for metal um, in like a C or a B type tuning, you may have run into some tension issues or some floppy strings in the thicker lower strings. And unfortunately, you can't just tighten up those strings because if you tighten up the strings and add more tension, you're gonna add a little bit more pitch, right? But we want those strings to stay deep and heavy. Now to increase tension without increasing pitch, you can do a few different things, but the most effective way is to increase the scale. So the longer the scale, the tighter that string needs to be over that distance to maintain a specific type of tuning. The fan design creates more tension where you need it where the longer scales are on the thicker strings and the shorter scales are for the skinnier strings. Now on traditional guitars, this can be negotiated a little bit with um, increasing the string gauges on the thick strings significantly. A lot of string companies like Daddario and GHS make strings specifically that have light tops and heavy bottoms. But something to consider is if you're always changing the string gauges, that can affect tone. That's really up to you. Now getting back to tension, do you ever wonder why you almost always break your skinny E string? Yeah, it's a smaller gauge, but also that skinny E string is on the same scale as all the other thicker strings. The tension of the high E string is on a lot more tension considerably than the low E string or the other strings. The multi-scale or fan design relieves that skinny string and then puts more tension up at the top strings. All right, now on to tone. Ever wonder why a bass guitar is so damn long? Let's take a look at a bass. Let's grab this bad daddy right here. So this thing, in all honesty, is huge. The scale is long and the strings are considerably thicker than a regular guitar. Now the thicker strings on this bass need length to vibrate effectively. The scale of a bass guitar allows the strings to vibrate at the correct amplitude and the correct frequency. So cramming higher gauge strings on the same scale as smaller gauge strings really affects that amplitude and frequency. This leads to muddy tone and hindered intonation shared between all of the strings. Bass strings are so thick and robust that they need to be stretched along a long scale to be brought up to an acceptable octave. This is what multi-scale guitars and the fan design achieve 
with thicker strings. By having more tension, the deeper strings can vibrate more effectively, producing a more clean, articulate tone. This is incredibly useful for all you genters out there. Now let's touch on overall performance. Do multi-scale guitars perform better overall? Some claim that they are better designed and they're more ergonomic for humans to actually play. Let's do a little research. Generally, when looking at multi-scale fretboards, frets 12 and higher are starting to turn inward towards the player. If you do a bar chord on, say, fret 15, you'd be pointing directly at yourself with your index finger. Ironically, this hand position favors the natural movement of your wrist called pronation. And since we're already down there on the higher frets, let's talk about playing leads on a fan fret design. Usually the frets in this area are a little closer together and the thinner strings are on a smaller scale. It could be argued that this allows for more fluid playing and less force needed by the fingers to actually play those smaller gauge strings. This is a common problem found in baritone guitars which usually have great bottom tension but the top tension is a little too stiff. So overall, in theory, the multi-scale design does perform very well at the higher frets and especially for lead playing. Now, if you do the same thing and do a bar chord, say at the first fret of a fan fret or multi-scale guitar, your hand needs to rotate out quite a bit, which could be a little unnatural for some people. This movement of the hand is called supination. I always remember it by holding a soup bowl. Now keep in mind, the degree in which you'd have to kind of rotate your hand does depend on how big the scales are because multi-scale guitars do come in different multi-scale lengths. What this means is some guitars are more fanned than others. So let's sum this all up. Multi-scale guitars have as many different scales as it does strings. The frets are fanned in proportion to the scales of the guitar. The longer scales are designed to promote optimal tension for the lower strings while also giving some relief and easing up the tension for the lower gauge strings. This leads to great intonation shared between all of the strings and better articulation, vibration, and even pick attack of the higher gauge strings. And boom, there you have it everybody. I hope this video helped you out and I just wanna thank you all personally for stopping by the channel. If you like the content, please subscribe below. That would help me out a lot and I would really appreciate it. Make sure you follow me on social media, link is in the description. See y'all next time.